last month. Our first report released in March was the annual strategic review report titled Priming for a No New Normal Future. The report explores details about the Indian tech industry's resilience and growth in the wake of global uncertainty. India's GDP forecasts are between 6.1 to 6.8 percent in FY 2024. Hello and welcome to the April edition of NASCOM Insights Tech Bytes. My name is Achyuta Ghosh and I head Insights at NASCOM and I am your host today for this show. What is Tech Bytes? Many of you are familiar with it, but for those who are not, Tech Bytes is a monthly digest from NASCOM Insights that covers highlights from the technology sector reports uh, that NASCOM has released in the previous month along with engagement sessions conducted, snippets on data, trends, strategies that stood out last month. The past TechBytes reports can be accessed for free in the link that we have shared in the description box below. The aim is to give you viewers an idea on what is happening in the rapidly evolving tech sector in India. What is new at NASCOM Insights in the last few weeks? Four new reports were released last month. Our first report released in March was the annual strategic review report titled Priming for a No new Normal Future. The report explores details about the Indian tech industry's resilience and growth in the wake of global uncertainty. We have some of our analysts coming into the show later on who will share more light on the key findings from this flagship research report. This is a paid report, but we are running some promotions around it. Next report is on India's tech SMEs rising in this global digital arena. This is a first of its kind report in India focused on the 10,000 plus technology SMEs dedicated to providing traditional and digital solutions to the technology buyers. We found that they contributed 15 to 20 billion dollars of revenue in FY23, comprising of 7 to 9 percent of the overall tech sector in India. This study covers a brief landscape on the state of the tech SMEs in India, their growth trends, digital and traditional tech offerings, and the potential growth outlook through FY30. In addition to detailed case studies that focus on their digital capabilities, this report is free and the report download link is available in the description box below. We also publish the quarterly industry review, which provides analysis of key publicly listed technology industry players for the quarter ended December 2022. It analyzes the performance of Indian and global tech companies, pure play BPM and ERND companies, along with some startups. Key highlights include revenues for that particular set of companies growing by over 2% quarter on quarter, even though we saw global GDP, tech spend forecast and tech contract value reduce from previous estimates in this period. Leading tech companies announced a healthy deal pipeline of over $19 billion in this period, but with a high share of cost takeout deals as compared to in the past. Revenues for most verticals grew sequentially, with manufacturing and healthcare growing faster than average. Headcount addition was flat, but utilization levels picked up and attrition continued to reduce. Tech startup investments have been a key focus area for NASCOM. We do a quarterly take on this topic titled Tech Startups Quarterly Investment Factbook, and the latest edition came out in March. The last report released, uh, you know, this is in partnership with PGA Labs and shared quarterly funding update on tech startups highlighting key trends and facts about the Indian tech startup ecosystem for the quarter ending December 2022. Key highlights include tech startups funding in India at US 2.9 billion in quarter 4 uh, of calendar year 2022, up 16% Q1Q, 1.2x increase in late state deal values compared to last quarter and deal volumes increasing by 17% Q1Q. Fintech retail tech emerged as top sectors attracting 38% of total funding. This is a free report once again, download link in description box below. The next section is where we deep dive in on one key report, which this time round is the annual NASCOM strategic review. And on this, I would like to first invite Nirmala Balakrishnan, Insights Practice Lead, to share key trends on Indian tech sector performance this year. Nirmala, over to you. Highlights and facts about India's tech industry in FI 2023. The industry revenues is expected to reach $245 billion in FI 23, growing at 8.4% in reported currency with incremental net revenue addition at $19 billion. This exports is growing at 9.4%. Currency headwinds impact is estimated to be approximately 2%. 
In terms of growth, growth is visible across four sectors and markets with stronger growth in US, APAC, in geography terms. While in sectors, VFSI, manufacturing, and healthcare is expected to grow faster. Growth segments are the R&D and GCCs. India's domestic market also witnessed a growth of 4.9% year on year in dollar terms. If you look at job uh, job additions, Indian tech industry continued to be a net job creator with direct tech employment reaching 5.4 million an addition of 2,90,000 in FY23. India now boasts of having more than 27,000 startups with over 1,300 added this year and 23 new unicorns also added. But 3,000 deep tech startups exist in the ecosystem with over 485 of them in the, ten, in the invented deep tech space. The year also witnesses a 7% increase in m and transactions where domestic m and increased by 29%. Indian tech industry continued to be innovative, innovation and R&D led. For 73% of all the tech patents filed in 2022 were in emerging tech area. India also houses over 1,400 global R&D centers. Digital transformation coupled with increased focus on building resilience and capacity, cost takeout and optimization requirements are redefining FY23 for the Indian technology industry. Thanks Nirmala. Many of you will be thinking on what to expect for in 2023. For that, I would like to invite Vandana, Principal Analyst NASCOM Insights to shed more light. India continues to hold the growth baton driven by the resilient domestic demand despite external headwinds. India's GDP forecasts are between 6.1 to 6.8 percent in FY 2024. As per the CEO survey conducted every year by NASCOM, the next year is expected to be a year of rationalization as growth expectations and workforce growth are expected to remain muted in the wake of global disturbances. Inflation fears, strengthening of dollars, among other reasons. As per another survey uh, conducted by NASCOM and McKinsey, 70% of the CIOs expect spend on digital to continue, with changes in priorities such as focus on variableization of cost structure, consolidation of providers with focus on providers becoming strategic partners, preference on impact-based commercial arrangements versus traditional, among others. For FY 2024, focus areas are expected to be digitalization, digital customer experience, cloudification, building world-class products from India, rising demand from tier 2 and 3 cities, and emergence of newer business models. USA, India, and UK are expected to continue to be the leading geographies of growth in FY24. Leading growth verticals are expected to be BFSI, healthcare, high-tech, manufacturing, and retail, with continued focus on using mainstream and emerging tech to facilitate growth. Thanks, Vandana. The next section is a quick overview of the engagement sessions that NASCOM Insights did last month. And for that, I want to invite Naman, who heads marketing and community for us. So Naman, can you tell us more on some of the key thought leadership sessions we did? We had four Tech Talk sessions in March that covered some of the most insightful topics of the Indian tech radar right now. These were the changing landscape of Indian tech startups, how Gen Z and millennials are reshaping the future of workforce, what makes sustainability a key priority for tech companies, prominence of power skills in modern project management. Our talk on changing landscape of Indian tech startup ecosystem revolved around the penetration of deep tech startups through innovative solutions, demand creation and increasing stakeholder intervention, journey towards sustainable development goals and key focus areas, broadening of the cloud native startups, need for digitization and go-to-market strategies. For this insightful discussion, we were joined by leaders from Fandoro Technologies, Katonic.ai, MTOX, and NeoITO. Did you know that as of 2021, India's share of millennial and Gen Z stood at 52%, much higher than the global average of 47%. And interestingly, 86-90% to 90 of the total Indian tech workforce consists of Gen Z and millennials. 
Our second Tech Talk of the month focused on how Gen Z and Millennials are reshaping the future of workforce. Our discussion revolved around key drivers for the Gen Z and Millennials for joining a particular company and the traits, what companies are looking for while hiring the new age workforce, what do leaders think this new age workforce can do to make themselves better at work, how companies are realigning themselves with the new age workforce. For this discussion, we were joined by leaders from Nugen Software and Tata Technologies. Sustainable development is a development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. How much of that is relevant in today's context with respect to the technology industry? In the third and very insightful tech talk, we discussed on the aspects that make sustainability a key priority for tech companies. In this conversation, we were joined by leaders from Happiest Minds, and LNT Integrated Engineering Services. Our discussion covered very valuable points around the increasing significance of sustainability in tech companies, the initiatives taken by tech companies to enable sustainability within their organization, sustainability as a rising business opportunity, key industries that are current and prospective front runners with respect to sustainability charter. The upskilling of project managers has gained importance over the years. The demands of the tech industry are rapidly changing and project managers need to have the expertise to effectively execute projects in the fluctuating market conditions. Organizations now need project leaders to have the skills and mindsets to explore and conquer new dimensions. And that need is only growing. Our fourth tech talk for March focused on the prominence of power skills in modern project management. For this insightful conversation, we had with us Ms. Lenka Pincott, who is the Chief of Staff, Project Management Institute, France. The conversation revolved around how important are power skills in modern workplace and how are they different from soft skills? What are some of the top power skills and how you can foster them? What are some of the key barriers to prioritizing power skills training and development? Thanks, Raman and viewers. The session links are in the description box below. Go check them out. The next part focuses on trends that stood out this month in the tech sector. So I'm going to go ahead and invite Prajwal Pandey, analyst NASCOM Insights for this. Prajwal, what were the key trends that you saw in the Indian sec tech sector this quarter? We've analyzed and got some latest trends in the technology industry for different segments, that is IT BPM, ARND and startups. Starting with IT services and BPM, first trend we observed an increased focus on academia partnerships. Indian and global tech companies partnering with academic institutes to bolster future talent globally, as we see Sandwell Council collaborating with Infosys to provide free digital learning platform. Capgemini partnering with 33 Indian institutes to upskill future talent. Another key trend in IT services and BPM is digital transformation, wherein IT companies continue to support global firms in their digital transformation journey. We have seen that TCS partnering with InvestNet Data and Analytics as it expands its technology ecosystem and embraces cloud-first data architectures. Adding on to this trend, Wipro collaborates with Menzies Aviation to revamp its air cargo management services. Our next industry segment is ERND, where we see partnering for mobility transformation as a key trend where Indian ERND companies partner with global firms to accelerate the software-defined vehicle segment. We saw KPIT partnering with Honda to accelerate transformation towards software-defined mobility. Alps Alpine and Tata Alexi also enters into a strategic agreement for growing vehicle software development sector. Moving on, hiring boost is the new trend in ARND where global airplane manufacturing firms and tech giant plan to hire engineers techies from India including Airbus that plans to hire 1,000 people and Boeing and suppliers which employs close to 18,000 workers in India have been growing 1,500 staff every year. Samsung R&D to hire 1,000 graduates from India, top engineering colleges this year. For startups in India, startup acquisition is our first trend this month where Indian startups continue to acquire for expanding product service offerings and entry to new geographies. For example, Physicswala acquired learning platform Knowledge Planet to expand across the Gulf Cooperation Council region. Also, Aqua General Insurance has acquired digital health platform Parent Lane. 
This deal would help in building a digital healthcare ecosystem focused on solving core problems in healthcare access for customers. Next one we have is the 1 billion mark. Thanks Prajwal. Follow up question. Will you share some insights on key contracts signed this month and mergers and acquisitions that took place in the tech sector? In terms of contracts, we saw Wipro is partnering with Menzies Aviation wherein Wipro's new product will support Menzies cargo technology transformation to improve business efficiency, employee experience and customer service through increased automation. We also saw LTI Mindtree partnering with Hellnick Bank to modernize bank's core business and improve its data analytics and process excellence solutions. Within partnerships, LTTS and ANSYS have signed an MOU to establish the LTTS ANSYS Center of Excellence for Digital Twin. The center will support LTTS in demonstrating industry use cases, develop future-facing solutions, and enable its customer to optimize design, manufacturing, and supply chain processes. Also, TCS partnered with InvestNet Data and Analytics as the latter expands its technology ecosystem, embraces cloud-first data architectures, and continues to bring comprehensive financial wellness solutions more efficiently to its clients. Talking about the acquisitions in the startup space, Aqua General Insurance acquired digital health platform Parentlane. The acquisition will help Aqua in developing a digital healthcare ecosystem centered on resolving fundamental issues with patient access to healthcare. Second acquisition within the space is an edtech startup. Physicswala acquired UAE-based K12 online learning platform Knowledge Planet. Physicswala plans to expand across the Gulf Cooperation Council region by 2024 through this acquisition. Thanks, Prajwal. This brings us to the end of this month's edition of Tech Bytes, and I hope you enjoyed the show. Given this is a result season now, what can we anticipate from the March quarter results? We expect softer revenue growth for more many of the large tech companies due to factors including stress in the BFSI sector. For reference, BFSI accounts for over 40% of industry revenues. We see a delay in decision-making cycles, which is driving slower conversion of order book to revenues in some cases. Also, we expect attrition as well as hiring to moderate further this quarter. We hope you enjoyed reading our reports. You can visit the NASCOM website and community to download and read the reports. Next month, we have an exciting lineup of research covering diverse topics such as future of technology services, AI platforms, M&A trends, and technology patents. So please stay tuned. Do like, subscribe to our channel, and press the bell icon on top so that you are notified as soon as new videos drop on the NASCOM Insights channel. Do reach out to us for any feedback and suggestions at research at nascom.in. And of course, feel free to comment on the video for a quicker response. Thank you.